Today we're going to show you how to fit seat covers to a Triumph Spitfire Mark II and Mark III. Tom here is going to be doing the work. My name is Johnny and I'm going to be talking you through this. So on the bench you can see the original Mark II seat and you can see on the right the frame that we have prepped. The frame that we've prepped We've done this in a shot blasting cabinet. Yeah, right. You might just use a wire brush, but essentially you need to take off all the covers, the seat foams, and then get it into the best condition possible. We've also painted the frame with an aerosol metal paint, and make sure you use that in a well ventilated area. We've also tacked new strips, wooden strips onto the bottom of the squad and we're going to need those to reattach the squad cover. And you can use either ply or hardboard, Tom, for that? Yeah, yeah, that's a hardboard. Yeah, probably a three to four mil hardboard. So what we did is we drilled probably, what, three mil holes into them for the rivets? Yeah, they've got five, five mil holes with a 4.8 mil rivet on the way through. So that's the starting point. That's where we're going to start from today. If you're using any original foams, we would advise that you use yeah. brand new foams. Yeah, we would advise that definitely, 100%. So we're going to get the brand new foams now. Cool. Foam kit. And what you'll need is some spray glue. To use this, and we're just going to get the foam so Tom can firstly just make sure and offer it up. So the first part is to uh, line the line the metal with this piece of foam here. So Tom's just spraying the foam surface using contact adhesive, get the best possible contact adhesive. This allows it just to go off, you've normally got a minute or so and you'll make sure that you spray both the foam and also the back, back of the seat. Once the glue has gone tacky, you know, you want to place the foam onto the back of the frame and make sure there are no creases. and that there's sufficient foam to wrap around the edges of the frame. So you can just see here Tom just pressing the foam onto the frame nice and firmly. Now you lay the frame on its back, just trim around. Just trim around the sides. Leaving the nut just to fold in. Yeah, so it looks like he's left there about 20, 20 to 25 mil on either side. He's just putting some of the contact adhesive on the inside of the frame now. Can you just show us how you show us the camera, Tom, that? Perfect. Just hold that over. And then just trim any excess bits. But just fold over, just with a pair of scissors. Too neat because the foam is going to go over the top. Okay, going to cover all that. Right. So, so you can see that. Tom will show you that. Just sit that frame up so we can see because the horsehair is just going to cover that. So we now take the shaped horsehair pad, and this is what we call the squad padding kit. We recommend this. 
this is, this is handed so it only fits in one way. As you can see, I've got to go in the correct way. And how can you tell which is the hand? Just explain that, Tom. It basically has a larger, a larger rounded side one side and a more flatter side the other. So just remember both of the horsehair pads are handed. Just offer that up before you put any glue on there. And you'll see the shape. So again with the contact adhesive, remember to do both the back of the foam and also the back of the frame. Make sure you use a good covering of glue for that. And when the glue starts to get tacky, which can, as I said, take up to a minute or so, squash the edges of the pad, as you can see, together to make them flat as well. Just doing the other side now. The idea is just to make sure there's no ridges or lumps around the frame. So a good little tip here by Tom, as you can see, he's just going to put some glue around the edges and then just essentially fold that just so it's got a nice smooth edge. Remember when you're using the, the aerosol just to use it in a, a well ventilated area and when we're prepping for this seat the kind of tools you'll need you'll need a wire brush just to get off all the excess foam when you're stripping the seat a hot rivet gun is good packet of seat clips some hog green pliers a hammer you'll need the aerosol metal spray paint maybe a jigsaw Certainly a flat screwdriver, some pliers, scissors. So take your time just prepping the seat. And as I said before, we do recommend you use new, new foam kits, the horse pad, the wadding, and the foam. Because it will make it even comfier bring new life into your chair. Yeah, ex exactly. So just do some final trimming, just take your time in doing this. We're looking for a nice, a nice trim finish. Okay. Right, so that's glued in. Just gonna put the wadding around the outside. So we're just gonna get some cotton wadding which normally comes in the, the padding kit. And as you can see, Tom will just offer this up. Good idea is just to lay it on the workbench. Just and just lay it out and then double it up. Just so we've got our double thickness. So, Good advice there from Tom. We're just going to fold this over. To get some double thickness. And it's now the same length, but only half, half of the width. So we've got plenty of, plenty of wad in there. There'll be some excess that we'll need to trim. Again, using plenty of glue 
to spray along the outer edge of the horsehair pad. There we go. So we're just going to get the wad in now. Line it up with one edge. So line it up with one edge and then just simply offer it around the edge of the frame. Tom's making it look a lot easy. <laughs> he uh, can take a couple of goes. But again, with the contact adhesive, you can take it off and apply it and start again. But lay the wad in centrally over the edge of the frame. Look at that, perfect. And just press that wad and lightly in place as you saw Tom do around the front and the rear of the frame. And then if there's any excess, we just trim that off. And this is a good bit. So you just want to take the plastic bag that your seat kit was packed in. And this is a good trimmer's trip, even tip. So. So we just trim that down, as you can see there. Just trim the edge off here. And then again, use some more glue. And this is going to make a big difference to when we actually fit the squab cover onto the back of the back of the chair. And there's a reason that we do this, and that just makes the seat cover just fit and slide over just a lot easier. A lot of people try this without doing this, and they can sometimes just draw the wad in or the foam. So Tom's just trimming off the excess on the front and the back to ensure the wadding is and plastic is flat and smooth. This will allow the seat cover to slide over the padding a lot more easier. So the squab cover, that's the piece, the seat cover that always leans against your back. It's called the squab and the base is the one that you sit on. So take the correct squat cover. They are handy, Tom. They are. They are handy. They are handy. So the same as the frame, you have a wider size. Yeah. So there's a wider side. So just offer that up. Always good practice to do that before you start fitting. Sometimes you'll get initials, sometimes in, inside the cover as well. Left hand, right hand, so look out for that. So once you've got the correct squab cover, you begin to just slide it down the frame to about halfway. Slide it all the way down, just to start with. Okay, so all the way down. Just slide it on, just get it roughly on first. So to get it on first, get it all the way. This is, this is the bit where you can be pretty firm with it, but you just gotta make sure you get the tension right, as you can see there with Tom. Just remember there, there are weak points in the covers, which you do need to, to protect so that you don't tear it when pulling the cover down. And that tends to be where the... That piece there, where all the stitching meets. Yeah, so just be careful with that. So 
just trying to line up that piping at the moment, just so it's at the top of the seat. quite a lot of pressure there just on the side so Tom is just smoothing that side and putting some pressure on the bottom where he's gonna just use a c-clip a c-clip we call it just on the side there just roll that over and just position that from one side and put it in place Just manipulating the top a bit now, working out any creasings really, just going over to the other side and just making sure that the outer piping sits on that frame edge. Yeah, that's the important piece. And making sure you've got even tension, like both sides, we're pulling at the same amount, both sides. So tucking in some of that wadding using the smooth bit there. So we're just looking to put another clip on on that on that corner. So Tom will just show us the bottom of that seat now, just so you can see. Will you put another clip in maybe there's, on the top? There's going to be a lot of clips along here. Um, initially, that's just to get your tension to get the left and the right side the same. So initially, you just start with one here and one there, and then we can move to getting the back tensioned. So Tom's just, just getting a bit of pressure from the back of the squab and just ironing out any wrinkles, just bringing it over just so that we can get that piping in line, using a bit of tension. Just getting that tension on that side and just putting it over with a, with a clip. Yeah, just getting the tension on the back there. As you can imagine, these frames have been in the car for a number of years, so they're not gonna be perfect, they're not gonna be straight, they'll have been bashed about. So the idea is with the foam and obviously the horsehair, just to iron out those wrinkles. After all, the seat is 60 years old. So it's looking in good nick now. Just making sure that that piping is aligned. Nice smooth surface so it is manipulating it, really getting your hands and fingers into there. So this is the original stag grain that you can see. That was put back in the day. That's been replicated for women's seat covers with the original white pipe pin style. You can see it's starting to closer to the back there now. So Tom's taken a good five 
maybe 10 minutes, just trying to manipulate that back piping, just so that it is sitting straight. So you're trying to fold and just manipulate it over the frame. That's perfectly safe to do that. Finish off putting a clip or two in the back. Just show us those clips when you put those in. See how we've done there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six clips. You gonna put any more in? Yeah, probably another one here, just retention this side. Sometimes after you pull this, these might need retensioning again. So just going back through to do that. So just gonna take off that clip, don't be afraid just to do that. So you can start again if you're not hundred percent happy with it. Like anything. When you're doing seat fitting, it's always good to do it in a warm environment, a warm garage. Not sure you'll be allowed to bring it onto the kitchen table at home. But the reason we do it in a warm environment is just so you've got that bit of extra stretch in the materials. Just going back, just to just to play with it again. So there we go. That's the finish of the tension. There you can see it's pretty good. Right, we're just going to trim this flap just up here so that we can then wrap that around. Just clearing the metal work. So we're now going to look at the inner bottom flaps on the piping. So if we just trim the water now, just trim the soft water now. So just getting rid of that excess wadding from that area, just using scissors to trim it away which then just leaves the horsehair. Gives you a firmer, something firm to glue to. If you stick it to the wadding, it will just all feel like and come apart, so. So just show us that, Tom, so we can see that inside. Yep. Just so you've got something firm to glue, to glue the flat to. Okay. So just put a bit of glue in there, just glue in the back of the flat and the horsehair area. So just gluing in that side bit there. Just use the contact adhesive. So once you're happy with that, you can basically just glue this flap in tight to there. Same on this side. Center. Basically just stick in the centre there, so just 
blue enough for the stitch line, the black stitch line there. Just spraying the horse hair. Just let that go off a bit. Make it nice and tacky. So it's time now just to push the two glued surfaces together. Just starting at the top. You can see he just pushed the center fluted area down onto the padding and he's doing a bit more glue. So again, just starting at the top, pushing the center fluted area down onto the padding and just making, making sure, ensuring that the flutes are vertical and that there's no creases in the horse, horse hair surround. Yeah, it looks great. Cool. And now what we've really got to do now is just, we're just finishing off this bottom section. So we're just going to staple this internal flap first. You know, so there's a little bit left flapping about here, which we need to just fix down. So just fix that right there. Trim off any excess. And what are you stapling that into? What bit? That's the, the wooden strips that we put in at the very start. So the wooden strips just sit either side of the middle. Like that. And then it's just a case of folding this this piece here just underneath so it hides any any internal welding foam out of the way. So just tucking in those corners at the bottom of the horseshoe, just so it's nice and neat. And then we'll be able to staple though the bottom flap of the seat cover onto those wooden strips. So don't forget the wooden strips at the beginning. Remove the plastic core from the middle of the piping. So Tom's just using a retractable blade, a scalpel. Just, just removing the, the plastic core from the internals of the piping. And why do you do that? Just so you can get a staple in over the top. If the plastic was in there, you would you wouldn't get a staple through the plastic would stop that. Right. Just going to repeat that on the other side. So essentially just stapling the empty 
piping down onto the wood. And again, Tom will just tuck those side edges neatly under, pulling out any creases, and then staple the bottom of the horseshoe to, to that tacking strip again. Tom's been doing this for many years and he's yet to staple his fingers together, but that is how it should look at this stage. Just stapling the bottom there. Those flutes are perfectly aligned. They're welded flutes for information. That's what they did in the 60s. All we've got to do now is just trim off, trim off the excess at the bottom. going to deep all these so we can get these to lay flat as well. Got it nice and tight in you know, that tension. So just decoring that piping again as you can see just put a slit in the side with a knife just nicking the core just so that that's nice and flat look at that. Done. We can move on to the base now. Perfect.